This tutorial shows you how to draw a scaffold after your perimeter walls or background image has already been inserted to scale. In general, when using IceCuff, ensure that you only have one drawing open in IceCuff at a time. Prior to building a plan, please check that the IceCuff default settings are correct. To do this, go into the IceCuff drop down menu, then select IceCuff setup or you can click on the IceCuff Setup button on the ribbon. Here, we can specify different settings for the scaffold drawing, such as general base sizes, height of the scaffold, that is the top and bottom lift heights, and whether the standards are staggered and the side brackets or hop-up settings. This top handrail option here allows you to set the number of nodes or connections you would like the outside handrails to extend to at the very top. You can also specify the number of decks and whether you want them on every level or individual levels. These settings are defaults and you're allowed to change many of these later, although it's a good idea to set them up in the beginning. In the extra setup, different deck types can also be selected, be it steel, wood or no deck. All these options here in relation to the base sizes and components are all dependent on your scaffold module. Therefore, the dimensions can vary in terms of all the lengths and widths of all your components. They can also vary depending on your scaffold system, whether it's quick stage, cap lock, liar, or any type of ring lock system. Scaffolding software can customize your iSCAF modules to suit the specific scaffolding system requirements for your company. Once finished, click OK. Draw a perimeter around the plan, trying to be as accurate as possible so that the base will be laid out correctly. After drawing the perimeter, please save your drawing. To do this, go onto the IceCuff drop down menu, then click on File. Save as, perimeter, and the file name of the drawing changes to tutorial1.perim. In the iSCAF setup, we can also make changes. For example, we can change the bay fit type to be fine and the side width to be one board, then click OK to save the changes. After that, we can now lay out the base by going to Build Plan by clicking on the Build Plan icon in the Build panel and iSCAF will build the base around the perimeter. We will modify the wall at the bottom of the drawing. To do this, click on Edit Plan icon, then click on a bay on the wall we want to modify, then select Wall Details. Here, we will change the bay width to 1.8 meters and the side width to 3 boards so that it can fit better. Click on Apply to Wall to save these changes. From here, I can perform some editing. I can, for example, change base around. While in edit plan mode, I can do this by clicking within the 1.8 bay, selecting Add a bay, then choosing a new bay size of 2.4. I can then click within the bay and that will replace the bay with a new 2.4 bay. We can also move a wall anywhere we like by going into edit mode. Select a bay on the wall we'd like to move, then select wall, then move. And now we can move it to, by clicking on the bottom left corner and dragging it anywhere we like. Safety is paramount in the scaffolding industry. To ensure this, iSCAF allows planking to ensure safety. We can perform planking and set up handrails on the scaffold drawing. To do this while in edit mode, select a bay, click on add properties, then planking. From here, 
select the first bay where the planking will start, then the second bay, then select the number of boards and handrail type and click OK. We will then be prompted for the first and second point for the handrail, then click OK. The planking and the handrail will now be drawn on the scaffold. We will now do the same thing with the sideboard since there's a large gap there. In edit plan mode, select a bay, click on add properties, then planking. From here, select the first point where the planking will start, then the second point. Then select the number of boards and none for handrail type as we do not need one here. Then click OK. We can add planking for the rest of the drawing where required until all large gaps have been filled to eliminate any potential hazards. Now that the bays have been laid out, please save your drawing. To do this, go into the iSCAF drop down menu, click on File, Save As, then click on Plan. And as you can see, the file name will change to tutorial1.plan. We can also make a scaffold wall or scaffold run anywhere we like. To do this, click on the make wall icon, specify the width of the wall as well as some other options, and just basically create a wall anywhere we like. There is great flexibility in what you can do with laying out the bays. We can change the heights of individual bays and walls. We can click on the edit plan icon on the toolbar, then click on the bay where we'd like to add a bay and select add bay, then click outside the bay where we would like to add a new bay and the new bay will be added. We can also delete a bay while in edit mode by clicking on the bay we would like to delete and then select delete, then bay. Then we would click on the bay to delete that particular bay. We can move a wall by selecting a bay, then clicking on wall, move. We can then move the wall by clicking on the bottom left corner of the wall and dragging it wherever we like. We're now going to add a ladder tower. To do this, click on the appropriate ladder icon on the ribbon, then add the ladder tower to whatever dimension we want. It can be an internal or external ladder. We're also going to add an aluminum stair. To do this, click on the appropriate stair icon to add the stair either north, internal or south then click on the bay where you want to add the stair, then outside the bay since it's an external stair. We can also delete bracing in any part of the drawing by clicking on the delete bracing icon. We can also right click to repeat the last command and since the last command was the delete command, we can delete those bracings there. While still in the edit plan mode, we can add section markers by just clicking on a particular bay anywhere we like and click on add, then section and a defined section window pops up. Alternatively, we can click on the define section icon in the section panel. This section marker will be used later when we actually generate a final plot. Click on the Save Plan icon to save the drawing prior to 3D build.